Hi, this is Casey here with my blog, Mountain Cove Home and Family, and my small business, Mountain Cove Market. This video is a um, kind of a semi-tutorial for a primitive old world armoire makeover. We had purchased this armoire at an auction. It's solid wood, and it had a like a coat rack inside or you know like a clothes hanging bar inside and I wanted to make it more multi-purpose where you could do a lot more with it than just simply hang clothes in it so we removed that and had some custom interior like shelves Louis built some custom shelves for it that way it can be used for Oh, like a kitchen pantry or a tall dresser or wardrobe armoire, bookcase, you can put board games in it. You just open it up for, it could be a dish cabinet, a cupboard, it just so many more possibilities when you have the shelves. And so this video will walk through the process. I knew that I wanted a very old world primitive, like it had pulled out of it, just that kind of an old vintage barn type of look. And so this walks through the process of how I did it. And I didn't get every single part filmed, but there with the talking through it and the parts that are filmed, I think you're gonna be able to pick up a lot from it. And I have to say, in a few years of making over furniture, this is in my top two of my favorite pieces. I love the way that it comes out. And when I sit and look at it in my furniture studio, it really does look, like it, I feel like I'm looking at a piece of art and it's rare that I really feel that way about a piece of furniture that I make over when I redesign furniture I can really like a lot of pieces and I like how they look and their aesthetic appeal that that usually to me don't look like a piece of art and this one did so I hope that you enjoy it and this is helpful for you so I have a 220 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna, I clean this armor vinegar and water, and I am going to go ahead and give it a scuff sanding pretty much all over. It's just gonna take like 10 minutes. I'm not gonna like sand it all the way down. It's just a scuff sanding um, to loosen up some, like just to cut through some of the shine and the gloss a little bit. It's gonna help the paint to, uh, here better and chalk paint adheres really well to furniture anyway without priming. This is just going to help it be more successful. So this armoire is seven feet tall and almost four feet wide. It's 47 inches wide and I definitely got to work out with my arms um, just sanding all over and after the cleaning all over. I think using this sanding sponge makes it so much easier to get into all the grooves. And again, this is a scuff sanding that's just going to loosen up the gloss and the shine and help the paint to adhere better. On this next step, um, we can look back and see the prep, se prep steps that have been taken. And the armor has been cleaned, it's been scuff sanded, and after it's been scuff sanded, um, I went ahead and cleaned off all of the sandpaper, again, just with vinegar and water and a, just a lint-free cloth. And so now what I'm doing is I have some uh, colors and I'm just going into um, just some grooves and cracks uh, to start out with. And the colors that I chose, um, my primary colors, is Valspar paint colors and I used a Krylon chalk paint. When you use a Krylon chalk paint, you get to choose from all of Valspar's colors. And so, which really makes it helpful. And I blend a lot of colors also, but they have a lot to pick from. So this is not a base layer coat. These are colors that I'm adding. You'll see I'm gonna do a few. I have a yellow and I'm gonna have some orange and some navy blue. And I'm just putting them on kind of in random places, creases and corners and edges. And I'll have a lot in the middle and just random places really. And then once all of those like spotted colors are added, then I'm gonna go ahead and do my base coat which is a Wilderness Green by Valspar. And the reason that I'm doing these underneath is because ultimately, 
after I have on my base coat, I'm going to give this a good sanding a few times and that's going to show um, some of those other colors are going to be peeking through. And I like that for the primitive style because primitive pieces, when they're really old, a lot of times they've been painted several times, you know, maybe over a 50 or 60 or 80 or 100 year period and you'll see different when one paint layer peels back or is faded back you'll see other paint layers uh, peeking through different colors it gives it lots of dimension and age and character when it's done um, just in a really layered look and so that is what I am going for in doing this and you'll see I have a lot of yellow in the middle and now I'm adding my base coat, which you know is my all over coat, my primary coat. And then once this is added, when I do get to sanding and I didn't get that part filmed, but you'll start seeing those colors peek through and those multiple colors really help to create a lot of character and interest in an old world piece. And that's really important. Okay, so this is where we are at so far and the colors seem kind of bright but we're going to darken it up over time so if you're a little worried that's a little too bright for old world, world style don't be worried i did i chose these colors because i looked at like some old european farm homes like around vintage like a long time ago in yugoslavia and i saw like lots of um oh just like earth colors so i'm really going with and then they had um like, so that's why I'm doing green. There's lots of, like, uh, kind of peasant farms and cobblestone barns and houses. And so I want to add a little texture. So I have, oh, maybe a little more than a quarter of a cup of plaster of Paris. And I'm adding some orange. And the reason I'm adding orange is when I was looking up... Um, Yugoslavian like home decor like vintage home decor like everything was earth colors like you know wicker baskets and things like that and um, oh, old-fashioned cutting boards and so but I did see some pottery and most of the pottery that I saw was green and yellow and orange so I thought I would bring these together so I've kind of made like a little paste with this and it's just for some texture and so I might give this a little squirt of water and I'm going to show you I'm just going to apply it in some random places mostly some creases and corners so that's what we have okay I gave it a little squirt of water and it's just plaster of Paris with some paint looking like baby food like a puree a little bit on my brush, not much. I'm going to go very light with this. Now that I've added my texture part, I'm just going over it with some paint and this is going to be just that orange glaze paint. And so I'm going to go into some random places. And again, a little bit later on, you'll be able to see um, when we get to kind of the finale, I guess you could call it. We'll be able to get to see how all of these colors kind of come together to make a really primitive aged aesthetic where it really does look like something that was pulled out of somebody's barn and been painted multiple times and gone from home to home or room to room over the years. So putting this these colors on in different places really helps to bring out that old world style. I also want to talk about the brightness of these colors. If you'll notice, um, they are pretty bright, especially the green. And I knew that when I chose this paint that it was a little bit brighter. I would typically su suggest when you're doing an old world style to go a shade or two darker than what you think you're going to want. And so I did go a shade or two darker 
than what I had wanted, but I also knew that this was still going to be bright, but that's okay, because the old world style, um, what separates kind of an old world style, one of the things is it's really just kind of a darker color, you know, like a color scheme, like it doesn't have to be brown or rust or black or gray, like drab colors, because there was lots of colors in like old world European flair style, um, that type of design. They used lots of colors, but one thing that is kind of a common denominator is it just looks like something that has a lot of age, a lot of character, maybe some grime in the corners and, you know, that type of really old farmhouse look. And so that's what I'm going for. And because my color is going to be, you know, these colors are going to be a little too bright. I did want them to, ha because I wanted something that was colorful. But at the end, it's also going to get the whole piece all the way around it is going to get two coats of an antiquing wax. Or you could use, you know, so the wax that I used was a chalk paint antiquing wax from Lowe's. You could also use just like a, a regular dark wax, like a brown wax. Um, that's something that I would recommend. This antiquing wax, I guess you could say the color of it was kind of like a, oh, like a real dark muddy brown or a dark chocolate. And so that's the color it was that helped to tone down the brightness. And after one coat, and of course this is after all of my colors and paint had been in, been added because waxes last. You really don't want to paint over wax unless you go back and sand it. Um, that way, like your paint might stick right away, but it's not going to have a lot of longevity. And later on, it could be easy for it to peel off or chip off in a way that you don't want it to do. Okay, and so now we're just going to go ahead and get the rest of this green coat all the way on. We're just going to cover it all the way up. I have a good amount of that orange glaze at the top, and I think there's some at the bottom. We'll go ahead and add some more at the bottom. I've got my yellow and my navy blue underneath my underneath the wilderness green coat. We're going to go ahead and touch up, get all the sides covered and the tops covered. This is definitely a lot of going up and down on a stepladder to get to the top of this big guy. And it still looks a little bright, but we're going to cover it up with some dark wax later and it's going to make all of the difference in the world. And so right now we're just getting some more detail at the bottom. And I would encourage you like to don't be afraid. It's hard to make mistakes. Like if you think, oh, I want some detail in this corner or in this side or this random spot and you try it and if it doesn't work um, if the paint is still wet you could take it and like a, dip your paintbrush in water or use a mister and spray and kind of blend it in or you could let your paint dry and come back and sand i had done that a few times on this piece i had like some paint in some different areas and like some detail paint like all the different colors that i had added and a couple of times I'm like okay no I don't really like this here and so I just got out my sand you know like my sanding sponge and sand it back a little bit and like it's hard to mess up a, a primitive piece like it may not come out exactly how you want it each step and so you're like okay I'm gonna edit this and then I'm gonna do something a little bit different so here to me this using the paint scraper with the detail is all of the difference in the world and um, really getting that old world primitive um, just very aged uh, aesthetic appeal to come through once this is kind of blended in and when i say blended in like not all of it is filmed but i'll take um, my little paint scraper and these are 98 cents at Lowe's and I'm gonna go do the same thing you see me doing it with yellow and then I'm gonna do it with orange I also dipped it in uh, brown paint and some blue paint and even a little bit of red and did this in some random places and so I my primary colors were the green which is the primary coat 
and the this yellow that you see here which I think is called a honey almond color by Valspar and the orange glaze those were my primary colors but I also did the same thing with a, a, the same technique that you see here and sometimes you know you just want to use your tip of it to make some light brushes or like some light little pats with the paint and then sometimes you want to take it and the whole flat end of it and kind of press it up against your wood and just go all the way up and down and it leaves this really kind of wonderful patinaed inconsistent um, just like the paint is just kind of inconsistent like your paint pattern and that's what I love because a primitive piece is not very consistent like not everything is done in uniformity and so that's lots of interests and surprises and here's the result of how all those colors mix together this is after the piece had been waxed and I'd use my paint scraper to go in and to add little splotches of colors here and there. And um, and so before I waxed it, I did give it a sanding. And then also right at the very end, I dipped my paintbrush, a chip brush into some white paint and just kind of flicked it towards the bottom and a little bit at the top just to give a few little paint splatters in there. and. Louis, my husband's like, oh no, what are you doing? You're ruining it. And I'm like, no, you know, it's risky, but I really want this very authentic old world style. It looks like somebody had just spilled a paint can close to where it had been sitting. And I think that is just really brings out the natural aging. And here is the inside. I'll paint it up with a barn red and a wilderness green. We took out the clothing rack that was at the top and added in some custom shelves and just to display that it can be used as a kitchen pantry or a wardrobe or anything that you want. And so this is how the primitive armoire makeover came out at the end. And I love all of the interest in the colors. And when you sit and look at it, it looks like a piece of art. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. It's just been a joy and a privilege to be able to walk through this. So I thank you for listening. And if you would like to take a moment, just go ahead and like this video and subscribe and we'll stay in touch.